That was uh, an interpretation of Kentucky Blues by George Little Hat Jones, or sometimes as he's known, Dennis Little Hat Jones. I thought for this session I'd talk a little bit about the process that we all go through when we learn a new piece of music. And a piece of music like this is not particularly complicated, and most people that play it uh, play it really quite accurately, but sometimes you feel there's, there's something a little bit missing. I'll move on to that uh, in later videos, but for this session I'm going to look at the very basic way that I start to learn a song. You know how it goes, you hear a song and there's something in there that catches and it stays in your mind and uh, you make a mental note to go back and learn it. But for a little while it's just in there, just turning around. And while it's turning around in your mind, of course, you're starting to learn it. You're starting to think, what key is that in? What chord is he using? How is he picking that? What are his fingers doing on his left hand and his right hand? And, uh, and so on. And then you get down to the actual practical aspects of working out what's going on. And the way that I do it is this. I listen for the parts of the tune or the song that stand out. Now in Kentucky Blues it's this. which is quite easy to simulate. I've got the cap on the, the first fret. I'm not sure whether it's in tune with the actual original, but it doesn't really matter. You find out, move your cap around, and uh, if you think that, uh, for example, it's on, it's on the third fret E, and the second, and then open, then you move your cap around until it's almost in tune with the original, and then fine tune it. So we think we have that down. We're not quite sure at this moment what chord structure or what key it's in. Now, we listen again, and the next thing I listen for is the basses. So what are the basses doing? We can hear this. Let's ignore that introduction uh, for the moment and just concentrate on the verse. So at the same time we have, we have this monotonic bass. And they seem to go together. But of course we have open strings ringing and vibrating, so we have to put a chord in there. It makes obvious sense in our minds that if we're using the, the bottom E for the monotonic bass, and we're using the high E string, then maybe we could use the chord E. And actually it fits quite well. does that twice and then we hear something else happening and we can put really whatever we like in there, a fill-in. In the early days, if you can't quite grasp it all when you start to learn a song, just grasp what you can, fill in with something else and then come back and fine-tune the technique. It works for me. So I just roll up with the thumb from the A to the D string. So we think that we have this E chord, so where are we going to go next? Well it makes sense, if we're playing a blues, then we've got this, uh, this chord structure of E to A, or A7, B7. So maybe this structure will work for us, let's try it out. If you listen carefully to the, the monotonic bass, after the E we hear this, which corresponds with the third fret, the bass E. then to the open A, which works great because it leads us into the A chord and we, can, we know that it's an A7 chord because, strangely enough, it incorporates this riff. And there we have it, back to E. Well, Yahoo, we're getting it because it's really quite simple if we concentrate just on the basic monotonic bass and that riff. We just follow the timing for the original song and change. And back to E. Now 
Now there's something else uh, a little bit different there when we use the, the A chord and don't start shouting, hey there's something missing Jim, because I know there is. This is the, the, the first start of trying to learn this song, so there's quite a bit missing. We're just guessing, we're using a basic picking stroke and we're, we're just working out where the chords are and where the main notes are going to come. Now we come to this really, this cool attractive turnaround. Uh, also the introduction, the turnaround and at the end of each verse. We can hear this run up on the bass string. And we find now that it's just B7 pushed up two frets, which is actually D7. Take it down one fret. Then we're going to use F sharp here. And back to B7. This sounds quite cool, doesn't it? So we'll stick with that. concentrated on working out what this run is but the other part of it all that kind of thing I'm just making it up it's not I'm not sure at this point whether it appears in the song but it works for me and it keeps the song rolling along so we have our basic E chord with that riff twice So it looks like we've got the basics of it and it doesn't really matter at this stage how you pick it. In fact when you're first doing it maybe you'll just simply strum it. But I'm not a very good strummer so I tend to pick uh, first of all. So you'd work out the basic chord structure in that way. And then when you have the basic chord structure you start to work on it and listen much more closely and, and work out if there's something that's missing. Now it can sound pretty good as it is. And if you want to sing along with it and put it in your repertoire then that'll do, that's fine. But mostly we want to take our playing up a notch, try and make it a little bit better than average. So in the next video that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and look at the basic structure and work out, try and work out exactly what uh, this guy was doing with his picking because it's not obvious and how we can incorporate what we hear into our techniques just to lift it above, lift it over the next guy. That's what it's all about. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.